Welcome to Calbekistan, a place where anybody can learn math. I'm Mr. Calbeck, and today we're going to be talking about functions. And I tell you what, today I am going to put the fu back in functions. Oh wait, no, oh gosh, don't record that. Today we're going to put the fun back in functions. for you guys today. What number does y equal in this problem? Kind of a weird question, right? This is different than a lot of stuff that you've seen in previous parts of your math class because there's two variables here. So I can't do any algebra to get a number for y. I actually can't figure out what number y is until I know what x is first. If you know what x is, then you know what y is. We say that y depends on x. Situations in math like this, we actually call functions. So a function is like a vending machine. Every function has an input and an output. Every vending machine does as well. So you're going to have an input here. I'll put some money in and see what happens. All right. And everything's expensive now, so it takes more than $1. But now I can choose my input. So if I would like the Gatorade, for example, I could push C6. And the output of my machine would be what I chose. Input, output. So in math, functions just look like equations. They usually have two variables in them. And just like a vending machine, there's an input and an output. In functions, we almost always say that the x is the input, and the y is the output. Just like in a vending machine, pushing the buttons is your input, and the thing that comes out the bottom that you ordered is the output. Input, output. Every function has those two features. So notice that the input and output are different. When I push an input, I'm pushing buttons. But my output is a drink. So the function is typically going to take something and change it in some way and give me something different. Math is the same way as this function machine. You can put a, one number in and get a different number out. So again, just like the vending machine, our equation has an input and output. The thing that you type into your vending machine, that's the x. It's the input. Now, the vending machine has a ton of different choices, all the different numbers and letters you can press. With a function, all the numbers that you can put in for x, all the possibilities, it's called the domain. So the, the possible numbers you can plug in for x are called the domain. Now in this particular problem, and in fact most problems that you're going to see in Algebra 1 at least, the domain of your function, the things that you can put in for x, is going to be the entire number line. So typically what we say is that the domain is all real numbers because the number line contains all of the real numbers. So in a function, we talk about domain as all the different numbers that can go into your equation. In a vending machine, you have the same thing. I only have a certain number of buttons that I can push. And I can push lots of different combinations of them, but the only combinations that the machine will read are the ones that correspond to an output. So if you want to know what your domain is in your function machine, you simply need to know what numbers can I put into my equation to get something out. In my vending machine, my domain is simply the combination of numbers and letters that I can put in and get something to come out of the machine. Now, the things that come out of your vending machine, I mean, could be soda or snacks or bottled water or whatever it is that you ordered, in a function, the output is your y variable. The things that come out of your, of your function are called the range. So all the possible numbers that you can get out of your function are called the range. The range of the machine is simply the different options of things that can come out. I have some propels, some Gatorade, iced tea, and water, and that's really all this machine can output. You'll find that function machines uh, have limitations on what they can output as well. Sometimes you're not going to be able to get anything out. Sometimes there's going to be a limitation on what kinds of numbers will come out of your machine. So that's what range means. Let me give you an example of what this looks like. 
Now, x, remember, variables are just numbers. We don't know what they are. And in this case, the reason that we call them variables is because they vary. You can put in whatever you want into a function. So I could put lots of different numbers in here. For example, I could put the number 3 in here. Once I put the number 3 in, it's going to crunch through my, my machine, and it's going to spit out an 8. Now, you could put a bunch of different numbers in here. You can put positive numbers in. You could put negative numbers in. You could put zero in. You could put fractions. You could put decimals. You could put any kind of number you can imagine in here because the domain, the numbers that you can put in, is the entire number line, all real numbers. And what you might start guessing is that the output or the range for this function is also all real numbers. So how can you know if your function is working properly? In a vending machine, when I press a button, C6, every single time, I should expect Gatorade to come out. If I press it, I should expect the same thing to come out each time. If something different comes out when I press C6, I know that this machine isn't working properly. With a function machine, it's the same thing. If you get more than one output when you put in a number, you do not have a function anymore. Your machine is broken. With a vending machine, it's easy to tell when it's broken. You push one button and you get a different thing each time. The vending machine is not registering your inputs correctly. So if I were to push C6 and got something else out, this machine would be broken. Wait, is that an apple? Yum. That's not what I ordered. With a function, uh, mathematically speaking, it's harder to see that because we would expect every time I plug in 2 into this equation, I should get out 7. That's going to happen every single time. So what would it look like uh, if a function mathematically isn't working? Or the way that we describe that in math is what happens if I have an equation that is not a function? Now, it's harder to see there, but we can show you graphically much more easily what happens um, with a equation. An equation that's not a function, that is. Okay, Fritos? There's not even any, what? Again, to understand how things could not be functions, we need to visualize what functions look like when we graph them. Now, this particular one, uh, we could make a table out of this, and we could look at all the possible numbers that x could be. I'm going to take a look at that right here. Again, we're just going to get a sample of different numbers with this. We can go ahead and look at this table and see what happens when I plug in different numbers into the equation. So again, I can choose whatever numbers I want to because it's like a vending machine. Now, if I pick some different numbers here, I can start seeing what happens. When I plug 0 in, it's going to give me 5 as an output. When I plug 1 in, now again, the reason I put this here is because 0 on the number line right here for x. If I put 1 in for x, I get out 6 on my y. Because again, I have my input variable x. If it's 0, it goes to 5 as my output variable. Input is 1, my output is 6. And you can keep plotting these points. And if you've done math in the past, you'd recognize this is a linear equation. It's going to go up in a predictable way. If we were to, to draw all of the possible numbers, all of the possible inputs and outputs, you'd see a straight connected line. The fancy math word for a line that's connected is just the word continuous. It means that there's no gaps or spaces in your inputs. Okay, now I know something is wrong with this. It smells nice. Now this happens with any function. It doesn't matter what the equation is. You can have all kinds of interesting looking graphs. And the farther you get in algebra, the more different kinds of shapes that you will see. But you can always tell if it's a function. If every time you put one input in, you only get one output. When I press a button on the vending machine, I should expect to get the same thing out every time. Star Wars Band-Aids, and it's not even the good Star Wars. Ugh. So if I want to plug in here, if I want to plug 3 in, I should always expect to get 8 out of this function. 
if I plug in four, I should always expect to get nine out of the function. Every single time I graph something, I plug in zero, I should always expect to get two and a half. No matter what the, the input is, there should always be the exact same output. Okay, now you're just fooling with me. A really easy way to test this is called the vertical line test. Since I'm plotting each of these points, it should always trace to exactly one output. So you can draw a vertical line through your graph. You can even take a ruler or something after you graph something and trace it along here. You should always see exactly one point where your vertical line hits your graph because what that means is there's exactly one input for every single output. That's how you determine a function. Wait, what is that this time? A shoe? What is wrong with this machine? It is possible to have graphs that are not functions though. Let me give you an example of one. If I had something like this, This is a pretty weird looking graph here. Look what happens when I try my vertical line test. I'm good right here, but at this point, I'm hitting three different places on the graph. So maybe I'm plugging in the number two here, and you can see on the, on the table here, if I plug in two, I'm getting one, I'm getting five, I'm getting seven, I'm getting three different answers. Imagine typing your calculator, two plus something and getting a different number on your calculator each time. Uh, your calculator would be broken. Imagine pushing something on a vending machine and getting a different uh, result every time you push it. Uh, that vending machine would be broken. And so likewise, when you see this result, that means that you have something that is not a function. Right here, again, we see one, two, three, four different options on this one. And again, visually, you can see that. One input is leading to multiple different outputs. And that's really what defines a function versus something that is not a function. And the only rule is at any point on your graph, if you see that happen, if there's any place where one input gives you more than one output, if one X is giving you more than one Y at any place, we say that the entire thing is not a function. One common mistake that people have when they're talking about inputs and outputs and determining a function or not is in this particular case. It's possible to have multiple inputs give you the same output. That's okay. So I can have, I can plug three into an equation and get out five, and I can plug another number and still get five. That's okay. You can think about this as a vending machine that has multiple buttons that give you the same output. You could have five Mountain Dew buttons to give you Mountain Dew. You could push different buttons and get the same thing. But you shouldn't be able to press one button and get lots of different results. That's kind of what we have here. We have different buttons that are giving me the same result. That's okay. So to review, a couple of things that you need to know. A function fundamentally is just an equation with an input and an output. Domain refers to all of the numbers that you can put into your function that give you an output. Range refers to all of the numbers you can get out of your function. A quick trick to remember this, since domain goes with the inputs, you can look at it alphabetically. D comes before R, domain comes before range in the alphabet, and X comes before Y in the alphabet. So domain goes with the X, range goes with the Y. It's a pretty easy trick to remember it with. The other thing to remember, your function, if it is to be a function, needs to have always this one rule. One input is always going to give you one output. If you ever see you plugging a number into your equation and you get more than one output with the same number, then it's not a function. Okay, I literally have no idea what this could even be. Well, I guess I get something good out of this broken function.